Happy Hanukkah, everyone! I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today in our Hanukkah special, I want to play around with one of my new favorite techniques, uh, using the Dry Tulip One-Step Tie-Dye Powder to create sort of this watercolor effect, layered effect on yarn. The yarn base that we are going to use today is Knit Picks Galileo. This yarn is 50% merino, 50% viscose from bamboo. And I am really excited to play around using a dye that is intended primarily for cellulose fibers on this yarn. Um, the Galileo dyes beautifully with acid dyes and I'm, I've never tried it with the tie dye before. So let's see what we get. In addition to the Galileo, I think that I also want to dye two other skeins of yarn. I'm planning to pre-soak one skein of Knit Pick Stroll and one skein of Hawthorne. Stroll is 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon, and Hawthorne is 80% Superwash Fine Highland Wool, 20% Polyamid. And I'm including these to sort of compare to see which one of these three blends takes up the most color from this tie-dye. There might not be a lot of difference. I didn't observe a, different, a difference in the past between the stroll and some 100% cotton yarns, but I thought that it would be fun to take a look at all of this. And not to mention that the powder packets I'm gonna open up have more than enough dye to do five skeins. I pre-soaked all of the yarn for about an hour at room temperature. I covered my counter in some plastic wrap, and then there is still some water in each of the yarn, but it's not dripping. And I laid it out here to be my canvas for us to sprinkle on some dye. Since we are dealing with powders today, I will be wearing this face mask and safety goggles just to keep myself safe. So if I sound a little muffled, you know why. I've gone back and forth a little bit today on, in my head on the colors that I wanted to use. I wanted to stick with blues and think about ice and winter. Um, so I think that I am going to use this sky blue, indigo, and gray. I have no idea if any of these tie-dye tie colors break, so we might end up with different hues on the yarn, but I am excited to see what we get. The color said indigo, but there wasn't an indigo packet in there. The packet just says blue. So we'll go with this blue, sky blue, and gray. So I don't really want to go from touching the wet yarn to touching the powder because it might clump and stuff. So I put it in one of my dedicated dye basins and I'm tapping the dye powders into these little cups. And I'm also tapping the excess from the packets onto the yarn. You can see some of that sky blue takes shape back behind this basin. Okay, so this is the blue. I'm curious if that will feel indigo. <laughs> And here is our gray. I don't think I've ever used any of these shades with the tulip tie-dye before. So I am actually really excited. Some of the dye colors look a little clumpy in the cups, but I'm just going to take some out with my fingers and start sprinkling. <laughs> And so it's dry at first, but then as it picks up some water from the yarn, we'll see the color sort of come through. My guess is that this is the blue, because of course I mixed them up <laughs> as I started out. I found that these tulip dyes have really good penetration. So you can have a lot of yarn on your counter because it'll go through multiple layers of the yarn. Okay, this one seems pale. I think that this could be the... Oh no! Maybe that other one was the gray. This is a... This pale one is sort of a bright blue. Interesting. 
It's a different tone from the one from the sky blue that I had opened up. Okay, let's see about this final one. Maybe, although I suppose it could just be more concentrated of that sky blue. This powder is looking, it's funny, it's looking warmer than the other colors. Okay, this one has to be the gray. <laughs> it's funny because the powders don't always look like the color that they truly, truly are. I am really excited with the way that these colors are coming together. Ooh, I do see some hints of red and pink and yellow. I bet those are coming out of the gray. I've seen that before when I've used the black as a speckle. Um, it's a little hard to tell the difference between the indigo and the gray, because the gray is almost a little like bluish purplish. But let's carry on and add more dye across our palette. It is super hard for me to not lift up the skeins to see what is there, but um, I really want to uh, wait <laughs> and I don't want to get my fingers wet as I am sprinkling on all of this dye. It might right now look like we're getting a lot of really cool speckles. However, these colors will spread out a lot. Well, not like a ton, but these itty bitty specks that we see here will spread and we'll end up getting something that looks uh, more like little splotches, like we took a paintbrush versus sprinkled on a really fine powder. Um, at least that's what I've seen in the past, but we'll see how this one goes. I do want to make sure I save some powder so that way I can flip over the skeins. <laughs> Which color is this one? <laughs> I want to be able to flip over the yarn and add some more to the other side, but I love the way that the colors sort of layer on top of one another. I'm taking some particular care to make sure I get some color on the ends. I do not mind if there is some white that goes all the way through at all. Um, but, so trying to pay attention to the very, very ends. And this is my, this is my brighter blue. Thank you. Yeah. So that bright blue, I'm gonna be a little more sparingly with it because that's giving us like this really great pop on the yarn. The other tones end up being a lot more subtle, but I'm trying to see if I can do some light application of this blue in some spots. I sort of like where it's a bit lighter, but <laughs> this is beautiful. Cool. And now, all right, I'm pretty happy with how this first side has gone. I'm just rubbing anything else from my hands onto the surface. And again, the way that the colors look now versus the way that they will look after we've steamed and rinsed out the yarn can be vastly, vastly different. But I'm going to let this sit for about five minutes. Um, to give all of the dye time to get a little wet before we flip it over and start the other side. See those specks of red and yellow? That is not contamination. That is breaking and different color dye particles that were in one of the mixtures. Since I'm now going to let my uh, hands get wet and touch the yarn, let's just flip it up and see. There's some fair amount of white beneath. Um, actually, might not be going as deeply as, as I thought. Uh oh, I did not add extra ties to the Galileo because I am a bad girl, but okay, there we go. And as we move it, some of the colors will also move as well. Mm -hmm. There we go. It's like canvas 2.0. 
you notice might notice that I haven't some of these I flipped just over some I've flipped completely over the other way um, okay so and here's a segment where there's some color all the way through and then this one is our stroll this one's our sock yarn the Galileo is the uh, quote official Hanukkah colorway the Stroll and Hawthorne are just sort of my bonus friends who I invited to come and hang out with all of us. But awesome. Let's, you can see like if I take my hands and poke, I got some color on it. So I'm actually going to grab a paper towel, but all things considered, I did not get that messy. So let's sprinkle on for round two. is our dye job. This might not look like a ton right now. You see a ton, lot of white here, but there's a lot of itty bitty speckling. And I know from experience that those aren't necessarily gonna stay itty bitty. Um, for example, if we look at this one indigo section right here, that was from the first application, the colors there have spread out a lot more already. So we just need a little bit of time. And time we've got. I am going to let this sit on the counter at room temperature for 20 minutes. This is gonna give us time to let all of the dye um, sort of absorb into the fiber. Um, I want to give plenty of time before moving it around for the dye to get nice and wet. And while we're waiting, I went around the edge to wipe up some excess dye. And look at all that yellow and red. And I'd like to add that while I wipe up the counter, I also wipe the floor just to make sure no dye got there. This dye is pretty thick, so it doesn't actually sort of floof into the air um, very much. And I found no dye on the floor which is, you know, just outside the edges of this countertop. So by doing this application, it actually stays where you want it to go pretty well. All right, I'm not sure if you can see, but our speckles are looking bigger. And the colors are actually feeling a lot brighter to me on our Galileo than our wool blends. But we will see. If I hadn't used plastic wrap to protect my work surface, I would be perfectly okay with just popping these all into the steamer basket together. But since I need to clean up anyway, I may as well use this and just wrap up my yarn. Mm -hmm. This, I think, is the largest jelly roll I've ever made. And look how clean my hands are. I decided to bring the pot to me versus trying to bring this to the pot. I'm using a pasta insert because that'll give me a little more room to work with. But oh yeah, there's plenty of space for all the yarn in here um, and space for the lid. So I'm gonna go over to the stove. I just turned on the stove, so we aren't quite steamy yet. Um, we need to let the water at the bottom heat up. But I am going to go ahead and steam this for 40 minutes. Normally, I will only do about 20 minutes or 30 minutes of steaming. But there's a lot of yarn in the pot, so I want to give it a little more time. Um, and yeah, but I think starting aha uh -huh, I'm starting to see a hint of steam in here so right now I'm gonna go ahead and start the clock for 40 minutes and I'll keep an eye on the heat level and I'll reduce it as needed as we go it has been 40 minutes 
you can see some colors have spread out and interestingly so that blue looks a lot more teal. Ooh. Part of me really wants to like move this around and take more peaks, but I'm gonna resist. I've turned off the stove, but I'm gonna leave the yarn in here to cool a bit. Uh, partly because I have to go pick up the kids from school. Partly, I wanna give the dye a little more time with the yarn. I don't remember if I mentioned this earlier, but we see these hues in the yarn right now. However, sometimes with yarn, when you rinse out the color, the color that you see while it's wet and you just dyed it is not the color that you see behind. Some of the hues change once you start rinsing it. So I am curious how much of this will remain as is um, or might shift. Nevertheless, I am really excited by these colors. All right, I'm going to take this yarn out of the basket and ooh, I see some yellows and reds and whoa, a lot of yellow there. Interesting. Okay, my plan is to unwrap this into this metal pan and then take them in sort of smallish groups to go wash. Oh, that looks cool. All right, here is my first look, and I'm trying to, okay, there is my Galileo. <laughs> I am going to pop my Galileo skeins into a bucket, and let's go wash them. And here, all right, we've got our three. And you can see that just from having them out, there is still some dye that will rinse out. Um, there are some white patches that might remain whitish, some more might come white, or they could get stained as we are rinsing it in here. So you can see that's a lot of color that's coming out, which is not um, unusual for these tulip tie dyes. Look at that yellow! Um, so far, it looks like some of the grays and deep blues will remain. I'm sort of amazed by the teals that are in here. How long has it been? It's been, it's been cooling off for a couple hours, maybe. But I have not, I can't believe I haven't tried tie-dye on this fiber blend yet. Um, <laughs> I mean, I love this, but it's sort of something that the uh, the viscose from bamboo probably would take up color relatively nicely. Now, I believe that this yarn is a hand-washed, dry, flat yarn, um, but I'm not particularly worried about felting. Um, you see, even after just a few rinses, that water, there's still some bleeding, but it's a lot clearer. Um, this, wow, this is a very Hanukkah-looking colorway. Um, I am quite excited. Oh. The one thing I will note is that if you do want to preserve any white, and I'm not sure how much white white I will be preserving, you do not want to leave it to soak. If you leave it to soak with the excess dye, you will end up staining those white, some more white patches, which can be a cool effect as well. So that's just something to keep in mind. I'm now gonna add a little disc soap. The water I'm using is not completely cold. Um, it's more of like a lukewarm water. But the soap can also help to remove residual dye, but it's actually going pretty well at this stage. So like that's not very much bleeding left at all, especially from where this started. Um, I'm really curious to compare the depth of color in this yarn to the depth of color in the sock yarns that we've dyed at the same time. But I love this. I mean, I just love the randomness and all of these blends and hues. 
I mean, I think that if I were to like hand paint with liquid color, I would not be able to achieve anything close to this. Um, so I love, I mean, it would be wonderful if you could get the speckles that we saw initially from adding the dye on to this yarn. But the results that we do get here are just breathtaking. So I think it's worth it. But anyway, um, this water, I'm gonna rinse, this I'm gonna rinse a few more times and then I will come back and we'll wash our sock yarn. Here are the two skeins of sock yarn. Let me dye for comparison. I've done the tie-dye powder on Hawthorne with my dry rub technique, but I have not done this sort of powdered speckle technique on the Hawthorne yet, but I have done it on the stool. I think potentially, I did an experiment which showed that um, time didn't necessarily make a huge difference. The big factors were either heat or time. But I do think that potentially leaving for a lot longer time can, in fact, make a difference. But I'm curious if, uh, I have no idea if the viscose from bamboo would take the dye, or if we'll see something that seems a bit more saturated on these stock yarns. But we shall see. Uh, either way, these colors are beautiful. I know I considered saving this technique um, for the ninth tonight, not the ninth night, but for the ninth video in the Hanukkah special, and to do this for the the uh, limited edition scene. But I think I decided that there was something else I wanted to do instead. But okay, this is already rinse three and it's a lot a lot paler. There's something to be said for not having way too much dye in the system. And some people might be bummed by the yellow and red, and I think if I weren't expecting there to potentially be some breaking, I'm adding some soap now. Um, I might be disappointed as well, but I actually don't mind it. My gloves were getting full of water, and at this stage, there is so little bleeding that I know my hands aren't going to take up any color. So anyway, I, oh, I think this is beautiful. I'm going to keep rinsing, keep rinsing until this water runs clear, and then I'll come back once all the yarn is dry so we can compare it all to each other. When I showed this yarn to my mother, she gasped and she said, I want it, I want it, and requested that I repeat this to create something for her. Um, and I agree, this is stunning. I absolutely love using these dry tulip tie-dye powders to dye yarn. I think that the effects that we get from the way it spreads out are absolutely, absolutely stunning. Um, and so now let's take a closer look at the three different fiber types that we used with this technique. The three skeins that we have are Galileo, which is 50% merino, 50% viscose from bamboo, stroll fingering, which is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, and then hawthorn fingering, which is 80% superwash um, fine highland wool, 20% polyamid, which is uh, like a nylon. And they look similar um, because I did use the same colors, but there are some really subtle differences to them. I would say that the Galileo and the Hawthorne are both two-ply, um, relatively high twist yarns, and so they feel very similar. Stroll is a four ply yarn and therefore I think that the effects on it feel softer. I think that this difference in the plies makes um, the colors seem sort of like smoother, more like um, watercolor versus brush strokes. Here's a close up of the Galileo. You do see some speckles, um, but then also a lot of different patches of the color. 
I think on the stroll, the colors are overall maybe a little more muted. Um, certainly they're a little less, there's a little less of a pop in them. But also from far away, um, in the Galileo, you can see the plies, whereas you don't necessarily see the plies on the stroll. And then the Hawthorne is one where the plies really do sort of stand out. And so that gives it um, a little more of an umph, I think, with some of these color changes. I was particularly excited to play with this technique on the Galileo because it's 50% viscose from bamboo. Um, this is something that dyes still beautifully with acid dyes, and including food coloring. It's just slightly more muted than if I was using 100% wool. But I would say overall, the level of color saturation is very, very similar between all three of these yarn bases. Here are the three skeins of Galileo. This is the official base for tonight's Hanukkah special. And, you know, they were all dyed at the same time with the same colors, but they definitely, definitely have a different feel. I think that some, I think that it's interesting that we do see yellow and red, which were not officially part of the colors that we had selected. I also don't really see or feel a lot of gray. What I do feel are multiple tones of blue, which makes this colorway feel very, very appropriate as a winter colorway. In fact, um, since I'm filming this in September, I am about to need to film a winter colorway for the Patreon um, early access video, and it's too bad. Um, I'm gonna need to come up with something different because this fits my winter inspiration almost perfectly. I love the Galileo yarn base, and I am just so excited with how well it did with this technique, and I know I'm gonna want to do this a lot more in the future. If you would like to learn more about Gal Galileo, Hawthorne, or Stroll, um, you can find links to all these yarn bases in the video description. All three of these yarn bases are technically the same dye lot. Um, I dyed them at the exact same time with the exact same colors, but they are definitely not going to be identical colorways. And I think that if you want to use multiple of them in one project, you're going to want to switch off between different skeins so that way you don't have something, um, that way there's not a noticeable change when you switch from one skein to the next. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and thank you so much for joining me for another episode in the Chemnitz Hanukkah celebration. Um, stay tuned for another night of Hanukkah fun. The new video will come out tomorrow night um, just after uh, sunset Eastern time. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. Finally, I had mentioned the Patreon a little earlier, but if you would like to support Chemnitz on another level, you really should consider becoming an official patron. Uh, patrons receive some fun perks, such as exclusive behind the scenes sneak peeks, early access to new dyeing videos, advance notice on Etsy restocks, which includes advanced notice of things like the Chemnitz Hanukkah sampler, if I do this again next year, and more. Um, you can find a link to it in the video description and the iCard. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and thank you so much for watching. Happy Hanukkah, everyone!